If you're properly armed and ready for the moment when the bad guy shows up, he's in a bad place. Hi everybody, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Brazil. Filster is one of my trusted holster makers with great offerings like the floodlight and trauma medical equipment to keep you and your loved ones safe. They're one of the few companies that I trust to make a quality product at a good price and I thank them for sponsoring today's video. So we can see these guys just chilling while two dudes on a moto ride by and you guys know what that means if you've been a fan of active self-protection for a while. So they're just chilling and waiting, but you notice there are two guys on a moto as well because they have two helmets and one bike there. So they're just chilling a little bit. Now watch what happens when these guys come back around. You see the guy back on the back of the moto jump off and pull a machete, but one of the dudes has a firearm. And so he's like, uh, we got trouble. Uh, guy's gonna grab his machete from him and his helmet, jump on the, his bike and yeet his uh, machete off and they take off with the dude's bike. So one more time, he jumps out with the machete, guy points a gun at him and they're like, uh, we lose that fight. So he gives up the machete and they run off and give the guys their bike. So it's a reversed bike jacking and that's where this one ends. Hey, calling all firearms instructors. If you wanna get better as an instructor, think about joining the Active Self Protection Instructor Certification. We already assume you can shoot. We teach people to be better teachers. It's a real niche in the industry that I don't think is very well established or very well taught. So if you want more information, look at the link in the description and think about putting in an application to join us. So I do think that uh, these are, are culturally conditioned ideas, friends, that we make sure that we understand that we understand our pre-attack indicators. So two dudes on a moto in many parts of South America is a carjacking in progress, is an armed robbery in progress without question. In some countries, it's actually illegal for two guys to ride on a moto for this very reason. Now, in other places of the world, this would be perfectly normal, but not in South America. So the lesson there, know what is coming in your area, know what the normals are in your area. So then that way you're prepared for them. And these two guys definitely were. Next thing that I really see them doing was is that they were paying attention. So they see the guys go, they recognize that's an indicator of a problem. So they start paying attention. Is it, are these guys coming after us or are they going to leave us be? So remember, attention buys you time, time buys you options. But of course, uh, you know, I don't know. These guys aren't, aren't necessarily the nicest guys ever either. They don't look like good dudes to me because they end up stealing those guys' moto. So again, recognize that uh, good being a good, sane, sober, moral person means you probably want to get the heck out of the danger zone. You saw that, you'd be like, hey man, let's get the heck out of here rather than stick around and wait for them to rob you so that you can rob them back, right? So that's what a good, sane, sober, moral, prudent person would do. But now let's think about from the protection perspective, they come around and I want to see this is the spot right here where our dude who's going to draw his gun gets his gun out. So he is paying attention to them, sees them come back, and this is the spot from which he is going to draw his firearm. When we talk about being a self-defender and having a rapid draw of your firearm, this is the reason that we do. Because the more quickly when you make the decision, I need to get a gun out, the more quickly you can get that gun out, the more time you have for decision making, the more time you have to get ahead of the bad guy. So when you have a two second draw to first shot, you can't do things that you can do if you have a one second draw to first shot. So now he gets a gun out and his time there was about 1.5 seconds. So because he had that 1.5 seconds, the guy didn't have the time to get off the moto, get his machete all the way out and close the distance to him, which he might have been another half of a second or so. So having that fast draw is a big deal. Now, of course, he's got him beat on the drop. If he sees that machete coming out, could he in the United States legally have shot this guy? Yeah, probably. I mean, again, knowing that he, what he knows, the guy's pulling a machete on me. I fired at him. Okay, fine. But I think a better thing here is that he had a little bit of time in order to give commands. And he did so in this instance. And because he did so, he ended up not having to shoot somebody. And that's a better outcome, for plain and simple. Even from a, a you know purely personal perspective, you're going to have much less problems with cops for stopping a guy by pointing a gun at him than by actually pressing the trigger. Also notice that the gunman stayed at distance while his buddy went and disarmed the guy. I think that's a good point as well, that if you have a distance tool like a firearm, you want to stay at a little bit of distance so that he can't reach out and grab a hold of that gun. Now, I also want to say, oh, okay, fine. You know, obviously I don't think it's a good thing that they decided to steal these guys' motorcycles, but there's no honor among thieves, so that's fine. Last, he decides to yeet this guy's machete and get it the heck out of there and then take off and didn't want the guy's machete. Oh, okay, fine. I do think there's actually a self-defense principle here that if you're not going to use that tool, 
that one of the things that you can do is just get rid of it. Just get it completely out of the encounter and remove it completely. So that would be with a firearm or something like that. You know, you uh, uh, drop the magazine jack around out and toss the gun. So then that way it is out of the fight. If you're not going to use it in this case with his machete, he just, you know, throws it to the side or whatever. So I'm not saying there were good people here, but I do think that there are still good self-defense lessons that we can learn as we seek to cover our ASP.